Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a story of a man who did this when he found out his wife has been cheating on him with another guy. Here's the full story with an update. I recently found this subreddit and it's been helping me understand and cope with this nightmare I'm in. I'm using a throwaway account because I spend a lot of time elsewhere on Reddit. My wife, 40 female, and I, 44 male, have been married 16 years and have two elementary school age kids. Over two months ago, she pulled me aside one night to tell me she's been having an emotional affair. Her exact words, with this guy she's been hanging out with for the past couple of months. I know the guy, AP, and I was aware that they've been hanging out. Having opposite sex friends is has never been a problem in our marriage, at least until now, since we've both been conscious of boundaries. Also worth noting, their initial hangouts weren't unusual since her AP has a similar age kid and the meetup started as public space playdates. This is what she told me that night. You know, AP, the guy I've been hanging out with. Well, yesterday I confessed to him that I think I'm having an emotional affair. You should also know that a month back he told me he was polyamorous, and this was in response to me telling him about two of my friends who are polyamorous. And yesterday when I told him about my feelings, he said that he felt the same way, but we now need to pause and get your husband's consent. I was stunned to say the least, but calmly taking this in and trying to be open-minded. She and I have talked about her polyamorous friends before, I know her friends, but not well, and my wife has even expressed interest in non-monogamy for us, but farther in the future. She was adamant that this not be a thing we try until the kids are out of the house. She was also adamant that if, when we tried non-monogamy that emotional attachments are to be kept to a minimum. I said this could be fun to discuss and explore, and that I was open to whatever enhanced our relationship provided we protect our marriage. She agreed. Some more context about our relationship. Our sex life has been quite fulfilling even after 16 years of marriage. She has not once expressed that I'm not giving her enough physical attention. Probably too much if she were pressed to admit it. However, our communication has been a problem for years. It was fine before kids but then got progressively worse. You know the stereotypical boy-girl relationship where the girl says, we need to talk and the boy would rather do anything else. That's us but reversed. I love to talk about anything. And I love a healthy disagreement. We can easily talk about what to have for dinner or what to watch on Netflix, sure. But anything potentially problematic like finances or household stuff or planning for the future. She avoids like a plague. I'll sometimes insist we address an issue, but I've also learned to back off when it appears it's going to make the situation worse. Also know that she was just recently diagnosed ADHD. I suspect a combination of ADHD, anxiety and depression is at play here with her. And we also have two kids so everything's damn hard on top of life in general. Therefore, when she brought up non-monogamy I also saw it as a chance to start having deep discussions again. I saw it as an opportunity to bring us closer. But these talks never quite happened like I had hoped. We would talk, but not in depth and not for very long. I attributed this to her just being generally exhausted by parenting and work and life. I should mention here that this would have been a year before we first met her AP. Yes, I met him too. And I'm as confident as I can be that their friendship didn't start until a year and a half after her first mentioning non-monogamy as a possibility for us in the future. So, she asked for my consent to open our marriage. She wanted to have this physical and emotional relationship with AP, and she stressed that she also wanted us to continue as the primary relationship. I asked her if she changed her mind about emotional attachments, and she said she has, that she now knows she needs an emotional connection first before having a physical relationship. After discussing it a bit, I said I might be open to this but would need to think about it. And we went to bed. And in the middle of the night my heart started pounding and my mind started racing. I didn't know it at the time, but this was the first night of two months of bad sleep as I would develop waking insomnia. By morning, and significantly exhausted, I told my wife that my body is telling me something isn't right and I'll need more time to think about it. The next five days were excruciatingly hard. At one point my wife noticed I seemed to be progressing through the stages of grief. I conceded that was an intriguing observation but then wondered, what am I grieving? Before the week was up we were contacting marriage therapists. In my reduced state, I let my wife handle this and she would end up picking a therapist who specialized in both marriage counseling and open relationships. The open relationship question in our therapy sessions ultimately petered out as an issue, since it was clear from the first meeting that our marriage needed more attention than any discussion of opening it. Another problem here is that while I could talk about this with my wife and our therapist, and she had her friends to talk to, I didn't have anybody else. Her situation was so secretive. 
Therefore, I told her I needed more help and asked if I could reach out to one of my longtime friends and get his advice. She agreed, but I could only talk to him. And after telling him what had happened, he pointed out the obvious, that she was cheating on me, being selfish and acting totally crazy. Around this time, I discovered that she was still seeing her AP several times a week. They'd go out drinking together, have lunch together, or she'd go to his house at night and watch TV. She said that we're just friends and that we're not doing anything wrong. I was hurt but I wasn't thinking clearly enough to ask her to stop. Two and a half weeks after the initial bombshell, which for me meant poor sleep, a minimal appetite, therapy, and many hours getting help from my friend, I gave her my answer, I choose us. I don't want to open our marriage. You can pick me or him, but not both. Also, while you're figuring this out and we're going to therapy, I want you to cut off all contact with AP. She refused to stop seeing him of course. She said they're just friends. I countered with, you are definitely more than friends. She said she had a right to be friends with whomever she wanted, and she resented me trying to control her. During the next four weeks, she and I continued to be civil while we worked through this, but our arguments got more and more heated. We'd go on a few dates to see if that would help things. I felt they did. She thought they felt hollow. I think we were both right. Our arguments intensified. She got an individual therapist. I got an individual therapist. And we kept going to therapy together. And at some point, she started sleeping in the guest bedroom. And when I realized that she was unable to cut herself off from her AP, I told her, not asking permission that I would be contacting her AP for an in-person meetup. And I did. He wouldn't meet me without her, and I said I didn't care. I had three objectives for our meeting. To confirm what my wife was saying was true, remember, she was my only source that this whole thing was actually happening. To look him in the eye while asking him these questions and gauge his reaction. To tell him to stop communicating with my wife in any way while we were in therapy, and still married. At first, he denied they were anything more than friends, but midway through our chat he shifted his narrative to my feelings about, your wife, are private. When I told him to stop seeing her, he said I support her choice in all this. I said, that's nice, but you are an adult who's also making a choice, and you're choosing to undermine our marriage. He didn't respond, and I said, we're done here. My wife, who was there the whole time, was humiliated and blamed me for humiliating her. I felt I had to do what I did. By the next night she said she's made up her mind and wanted a divorce. Hearing her explicitly say she wanted a divorce was the hardest moment for me. She sounded so sure. The next day I'm calling my parents, my sister, and my in-laws to give the news. Yes, I'm very close to my wife's parents. They regard me as a son, and my love for them is just as strong. They knew a little about what we were going through but not about the AP because my wife didn't feel like that was any of their business. Her words. So I told them. Their response was unexpected. I was devastated about getting a divorce, but my in-laws were strangely calm. My mother-in-law said, give her time and space. Remove yourself from her day to day as much as possible. We love you both no matter what happens. I didn't really understand but they explained that this happened to them about 30 years ago. My mother-in-law had an emotional affair and the antidote for her was the time and space needed to let the reality of her choice set in. They explained to me that it's not guaranteed to work but it's the best course of action to take if the marriage is to be saved. This conversation was a couple of weeks ago. Since then, I've ceased most daily interactions with my wife. I'll talk about the kids if necessary, about mundane household stuff but not about us. No arguments and no emotional reactions. She'd tell me she's going out to see her AP and I'd say okay. One day she realized that I told others about her emotional affair, including her mom and dad, and she got angrier than I've ever seen in my life. I assume the outburst was her house of cards starting to come crashing down. She fumed at me, that's not your story to tell. But I only said, I understand. No reaction, no discussion. She said that I've ruined her relationship with her parents for possibly the rest of her life. I thought, no, you did that. But I didn't say anything. I had a trip planned with my friend since before all this started. This is with my friend who helped me through this, so I just recently left for that. In the past, I'd normally share photos of my adventures with my wife and we'd chat each night. Not this time. It's been near silence. So that brings us to the present. I have an appointment coming up to consult with a lawyer. I'm sleeping better than I have in a long time in addition to eating well and exercising. My wife is the love of my life, but I know it takes two to make this work. I will take her back if she ultimately makes the choice to come back. She'll have to do some significant soul searching to convince me. And even then I'm not going to easily accept her turnabout choice. But if not, then I need to let her go and move on. Thanks for listening to my story. And feel free to comment, ask questions, or give advice. I welcome it.
The AP is still married but separated. Both he and his separated wife are polyamorous and are staying legally married for their child. The AP currently has a primary girlfriend, or a public partner as it's called, and my wife would join their polycule as a secondary, not public partner. In her fantasy originally, I would consent and we would be a primary couple. And now that I'm part of this polycule I would be free to go find other partners myself. Also, the AP's girlfriend knows about my wife. My wife even said several weeks back that the three of them had lunch together and my wife described it as very welcoming. Sounds cultish to me but having learned a hell of a lot more about this lifestyle in the last two months, I understand warm and welcoming is their preferred norm. My wife's been unhappy at times in the past few years, who hasn't, but it was never get a divorce unhappiness. People might say there were signs but I'm not an inattentive husband. I was consistently present and this was out of the blue. My wife was the love of my life, my soulmate if you want to get weird about it. Even after she opened marriage bombed me she still expressed her usual love for me. It was only after I wrecked her fantasy did things start to deteriorate. I'm at the beginning stage of fully letting her go. I don't think she can come back from this. It's possible she'll hit bottom and want to fix things but I'll have moved on by then. She showed a spark of wanting to fix things as recently as Halloween night. We were walking around as a family and she briefly opened up. She saw her AP the following night and by the next night was firmly back in divorce mode. It's hard not to see her seeing him as having influence. Since writing this post, I've arrived at what I'm calling the beginning of acceptance that I'm getting divorced. This is a new spot for me. I wasn't here five days ago. Now I can see the future without her. I worry about my kids but they'll be just fine if I can show them what just fine looks like. I've already made up my mind that if she starts asking questions about reconciling with me, I'm going to start with a series of hard no's. After several no's and she's still trying, I'll start parroting her own crap she said during her affair fog back to her. Stuff like, relationships should serve the individual and I've been unhappy for years and I'm not settling for a bad marriage. I'll say, everything you said are all excellent reasons to leave. She'll have to show me that she actually wants to devote herself to me and commit to us and not head for the door at the first sign of stress. And I need to believe her. I don't think she'll be able to do it. But if she hits rock bottom and over time really tries to be better, then I'll consider it. For weeks I simply thought AP didn't know we were in marriage therapy, that he was simply seeing my wife as friends ready to take the next step once I made up my mind and consented. That I wasn't troubled at all and simply weighing my options. I thought it very likely my wife didn't tell him any of this, but then I found out that he knew pretty much right away. Then my opinion of him took a dive. Why would someone who claims to be all about this polyamorous lifestyle choose to insert himself so unethically like a wedge in a marriage crisis? When we finally did meet face to face, I could see him starting to hedge. Like he was planting himself firmly on the legal side of the line without regard to the ethical side. Also, in order to do what he did, to distance himself, he had to allow my wife to be humiliated because he essentially said I plead the fifth to all of my questions. It worked for him in the short term because my wife blamed me for humiliating her and not him for keeping his actual feelings private. A lot has happened since I posted this, mostly stuff in my own head. I wanted to leave a way back for my wife in case she was truly ready to face reality. I wouldn't have settled, but I do believe in the power of redemption and that what I know was over a decade of a loving marriage. I believe there's a power there that can be healed. However, that was over a week ago. Thanks to everyone's comments and simply the time to heal my own head. I'm now going to move on. There's a micro chance she'll want to reconcile and a micro chance there of me agreeing to it. But it's pretty much done. Writing and posting this and hearing everybody's comments has helped shape how I see the future going forward. Over a week ago, I still couldn't imagine a future without my wife even as I wrote that I will move on. Also, I wanted to leave a trail back to our marriage in case my wife saw the error of her ways and since I believe in the power of redemption. There's too much to heal and fix and to expect that of her is too much a gamble on my part. And that's assuming she can even be saved, which based on our interactions lately I don't think it's possible. So, that's it. I'll leave the tiniest of tiniest doors open for her if she tries, but I don't see her choosing it and I don't see me taking her up on it. I've already decided that even if she wants to reconcile and lets me know, I'm going to say a hard no multiple times. She'll have to work through a series of no's for me to even respond with a different answer. I'm healing from this, and it's helping me move on. Much has happened since my post that I think warrants an update. I'll wait for everything to finalize and then post it. I predict we're definitely divorcing but there's also a slim chance of reconciliation. And yes, you are correct about my mindset shifting. Reading everyone's comments here and also finally reaching the acceptance stage on my journey to divorce has helped me see what I need to do. 
I believe in the power of redemption and if my wife seeks it, I want to help her get there. Our 16-year marriage was fundamentally good and loving, and not based on lies. However, as everyone here has taught me, I also believe in self-respect. If my wife isn't willing to put forth the effort to heal our marriage and truly love me again, then I wouldn't be respecting myself to reconcile for anything less. She's showing signs of her affair fog lifting and the reality of being a single mom starting to weigh on her. But I've mentally prepared myself to move on. If she expresses any doubts to me, she'll be hearing a series of hard no's before I'm even willing to talk about it. She'll need to fight her way back if she wants back. She's also headstrong. She may carry her stubbornness all the way out and good riddance if that's what happens. I'm worried about the kids, of course. I keep telling myself they'll be okay as long as we love them. My wife absolutely knows that whatever struggles they encounter are because of her choices. OP, there's no assurance that she will return. And so far, she hasn't demonstrated any genuine interest. Whether or not she returns, you've commendably distanced yourself from your emotions and navigated the grieving process independently. She won't play a role in your healing journey, and her lack of remorse remains evident. Therefore, prioritize your well-being and persist in your recovery. Seek constructive outlets for grieving. What you're experiencing is profoundly distressing and a positive release is essential. Make self-care a priority and adopt healthy coping mechanisms. You're handling the situation admirably. Ultimately, it's your life, your family, and your passage through this complex situation. I trust that you can overcome this betrayal and fulfill your role as a responsible and caring father for your children. Good luck and stay strong. I can't tell if I'm overreacting here. Maybe someone here can help me find a new perspective. Background, we've been married for 22 years. We have four kids, 12 to 20. We were raised religious and got married very young. I have Asperger's, she has depression. We've been working through these for a while now. About five years ago, my wife got deeply into World of Warcraft and started playing, nearly exclusively, with this one guy. I discovered some texts on my wife's phone between them that I felt crossed a line. Explicit conversations about sex, requests for bears, but no bears effect. I found this out through snooping. I am ashamed of this and don't want to repeat, however, what she admitted to doing doesn't match what I found. We partially addressed this in couples therapy, where she admitted she crossed a line and she agreed that our rules were no flirting. No sensual banter in texts with future friends. Recently, she's been texting with a different guy she met while taking our youngest to sports practice. This person is worried their wife may be having an affair and started confiding in my wife. This caused me a little worry, echoes of the previous time, but I really wanted to give my wife the benefit of the doubt. But she's leaning on him too as one of our children had a mental health crisis a couple months ago. Overall things between us have been improving and I thought they were pretty good, albeit still with some major challenges. A week ago, she came to me with a request, never snoop on their conversations because she promised him confidentiality. I agreed, and then I asked if she was honoring our rules, and she said she wasn't. We've had some emotional discussions about it, and she says it's not serious flirting, think witty banter with crude sex jokes, maybe some sensual tension, no talk of specific sex acts between them. Obviously, this has really shaken me. Can I trust her self-reporting of the nature of their conversations? Am I overreacting? How can a relationship rebuild trust after something like this? I'm considering divorce, but I don't want to, if the relationship can be saved, but how can it? I want to scream at the top of my lungs to everyone in the world what she did. That she had affairs with two different men simultaneously, one the baseball dad friend, and the other her massage therapist. I want folks to know the cause of my pain. But I know that the more noise I make about this, the harder the divorce will be, the more she'll dig in. And if I reveal that I know more than she thinks at the right time, it could significantly reduce alimony. And in our income situation, that's a really significant benefit. So I guess I'll just suck it up some more, at least for a little while. Just not forever. Figured I'd give an update to my situation. About two weeks ago, I found proof that what I suspected was an emotional affair had turned into a physical affair. It made me sick to read their messages to each other about doing teenage things, and proof that my soon-to-be ex had been lying about it the whole time. I told my therapist, who is also her therapist, and RMC, I know this isn't a typical setup, but it does have some surprising benefits if the therapist can manage it, and processed it for a week, and decided that I needed to make the decision. So I set up a special session with the MC so I wouldn't get sidetracked, and so she could have some support, and confronted her. 
I think I'll probably always remember the script I used. Straight to the point, you've been cheating on me and lying to me and that's no foundation for a marriage. I'm here to negotiate the next phase of our relationship, which will be amicable co-parents. You're no longer welcome in the master bedroom. She was in shock for a while. For some reason, she didn't seem to think that her actions could have consequences. I left the session then because I wasn't needed, and more discussion wouldn't have been productive in her mental state anyway. Even though I knew what happened was the most likely outcome, it still hurt like hell for her not to fight for me. Not to apologize, just to take it. Anyway, we're working on our divorce now, and it really will be for the best. There's been a lot about our relationship that hasn't worked well for a long time. There was a lot that did work well too, mostly about the kids, and we both realized that we've needed this for a long time. Hurts like hell now, but opens a door to better things. I don't forgive her. I won't rug sweep this or lie about what happened. But as we are on track for an uncontested divorce that is so far seeming favorable to me, I see no reason to broadcast what she did. And I'm ready to move on. Not necessarily to a new relationship, but to the next phase of my life not in orbit around her. Thanks everyone for the guidance and support that's been here. I'll keep posting updates. I'm trying to mourn the end of my marriage, but it's hard. Because I realize the marriage I thought I had, the marriage I want to mourn, never existed. Or if it did, it ended a long time ago. I know it's ending, both in a legal sense and an emotional sense. And while I now logically know it ended for her a long time ago, I haven't quite figured out how to come to terms with that emotionally. I'm sure I'll get there eventually, but just wanted to share with people who would understand. OP, just be patient until the divorce is finalized and then reveal the truth about her actions. Infidelity often involves a web of lies and who knows what she might be telling people about the reasons behind your split. Refuse to let her manipulate the situation as it could have negative consequences for you in the long term. Furthermore, you're currently experiencing the stage of denial, which is why accepting the reality of the situation is challenging. There may also be moments of bargaining as you try to make sense of everything. I extend my wishes for strength and healing, take solace in the knowledge that time heals all wounds, and one day, this will become a distant memory. I encourage you to continue seeking therapy to address the trauma caused by this betrayal. Good luck and stay strong. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like my videos then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.